House Speaker Mike Johnson has been saying the right things about getting Ukraine aid through the House. But is the Russian propaganda machine saying the quiet part out loud? Or is this itself more propaganda. We're going to start peeling back layers of the onion, looking at what the Kremlin is saying about having their man in DC. I'm Paul, US Army combat veteran. Let's talk about it. But first, no, we're not going to talk about the gum. I asked you guys in my last video to write to your congressman and tell them about how important it is to get Ukraine aid through. And I said that I would shout you guys out. And and I am a man of my word. So Let's take a look here at two messages from our subscribers that they sent to their congressman. And if you want to do this, the link is in the description where you can just enter your zip code. It's house.gov and you can just plug in your zip code. It'll tell you who your congressman is and you can tell them just what you think about passing this aid to enable Ukraine to defend itself from Russian aggression. First user is, of course, uh, Tejano Pendragon. And he wrote to Jake Elsey uh, from the Texas 6th District. He said, quote, I would like to express to you, sir, that support for Ukraine in their struggles against the oncoming invasion is the most important issue to me. And I have never before voted for someone who ran under the Democratic Party, but I would if that's what would move this forward. That's that's a that's a big statement, right? Because you guys know that in the House, everyone is up for election every two years. So everybody's seat is going to be up for grabs, right? So the House could totally change hands um, if you have enough people who feel this way. So that is definitely going to resonate uh, with their office, right? And again, another user, Mark, I've, I've anonymized him a little bit. Um, but Mark says, quote, Mr. Mike Thompson, we've met several times at blank, 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 blank. Uh, and I've always been a supporter of you, even though I typically lean to the right on most issues. I found you to be fair and balanced as far as your policy decisions go, even though I vote mostly Republican slash right. That said, please share this with your Republican colleagues. Unless we, the United States of America, fully support the fight in Ukraine, giving the Ukrainians what they need to win the war with Russia, my support for any GOP candidate is done. Whoa. Fighting for what is right and just is the American way, and I will not stand by and let my country let down another ally. Yeah, this this dude, I get me and him see the same thing, right? Hard to see our Kurdish allies, our Afghan allies get uh, walked out on on their time of need. I don't want to see it happen to our Ukrainian allies as well. He says again, please share this with your Republican counterparts. Time is of the essence. Let's stop uh, de demonetize German dictator 2.0 before we end up in World War III. Sincerely, Mark XXX California. And one last one, DJ Tiger Stripe says, Dear Earl Blumenauer, please do what you can as a respected and experienced Oregon congressman to help get Ukraine aid bill through. The lives of innocent civilians depend on it. Thank you. Right? Just a reminder, three different ways that you can reach out. All of them are respectful, but very clear in their stance that this is an important issue. So I appreciate you guys for shouting them out. I appreciate all you guys that do that. That is really what makes a difference, um, truly, because all the money those guys raise, all the big donors they cultivate, they spend that money to advertise to voters. And when the voters come out and contact them and go, hey, I'll save you $300, $500 a head to convince me to vote for you. I'll tell you how to do it. This is what I want from you, right? They value that. That's so important uh, to these representatives. So again, try to do it if you can. And thanks to you guys. Okay. So here's here's the big article, right? New York Times uh, actually quoting people in a recent meeting between Speaker Mike Johnson and the Japanese Prime Minister, um, where in this meeting, uh, again, it was a closed door meeting, but a number of officials were there. Um, and the Japanese Prime Minister asked him point blank, hey, Speaker Johnson, what's the holdup to this aid to Ukraine, right? Now, you may know Japan, right? So Japan has a vested interest in this, believe it or not. And here's kind of the way it would work, is that China looks at Taiwan the way Russia looks at Ukraine, right? Because China says, listen, we, like Russia, believe that Taiwan is actually a part of our sovereign country, much like Putin's Rusky Mir narrative. And so if Russia is allowed by the international system to annex Ukraine, if eventually the international community goes, eh, you can just have it, it's not worth it, then China's going to go, we know, we can take Taiwan the same 
way. And for Japan, right? Remember, Japan also has territorial disputes with China um, over, I believe it's the Spratleys. And so Japan says, listen, we need the international community to make the message clear. Just because you're a big, powerful, militarized autocracy doesn't give you the right to steamroll smaller Western neighbors, right? So Japan's asking Mike Johnson, yo, dude, what's up? And Mike Johnson said, quote, we're going to get this done. And multiple people have said that's what Johnson has said in a lot of meetings, publicly and privately, that he intends to ensure the House will move to assist Ukraine. But the hard part is getting things through, right? And the actual mechanics, the actual ebb and flow of it is much harder than they appreciate. As this article points out, it makes a lot of the points that we've already discussed, right? House Republicans are increasingly opposed to uh, assisting Ukraine, right? Allowing Russia to just annex the country, I guess. But also Democrats are really irate about giving more aid to Israel, uh, given the fact that the Israeli military just uh, is not doing their part to protect civilians in this conflict, right? Um, in appearing to, in a lot of cases, actively inflict a humanitarian catastrophe. Um, and that is hard for Democrats to swallow. Um, because their voters are very incensed about this, right? And so he's got to find a way to keep this sort of centrist uh, perspective moving the bill through, uh, getting the bill to the finish line, or at least to a vote on the floor without losing his job, right? Um, some Republicans have expressed interest in structuring the aid as a loan, something that Johnson has floated and that Donald Trump actually endorsed. Trump raised the idea again after a private meeting with Johnson at Mar-a-Lago. And frankly, if you want me to be a realist, right, uh, Trump would actually, this would actually, if Trump wins the election, having Ukraine in his mind owe the United States money would actually make him more likely to support continued Ukraine aid. Because if you're a real estate developer, right, like like Trump was in the 80s and 90s, uh, you know that if a contractor owes you money and they go bankrupt, you don't get your money. So there's an incentive to make sure that you structure payment plans, that you do what you can to keep your subs afloat. Right. And that doesn't mean throw more good money after bad. But if the sub goes, listen, I'm going to go bankrupt if you don't give me, you know, if you don't adhere to your payment schedule or I don't adhere to mine. Right. You're, you're going to go, uh, OK, like I, I owe you the ability like I will lose if you lose. If the sub goes bankrupt, I don't get paid. Right. And so Trump would understand that as a real estate businessman would understand that if you if, if, if Russia takes Kiev, the U.S. would never get its money back. Now, you and I know that like the Marshall Plan, for example, and a lot of these developing countries, their loans can be renegotiated uh, and, and often are. Um, and so or guaranteed or written off or all sorts of, of options are available. Right. So it a more sophisticated actor understands that international loans among international, uh, well, different countries, international loans have a somewhat more flexible character. So I actually think this isn't a terrible idea, believe it or not. Um, plus as the United States, right. We're like, Hey, just like the Marshall plan, right. We wrote a couple of big checks up front, but then that money drove demand and ended up being the engine selling U.S. manufactured goods to Europe actually became a huge economic boon, right? Way outstripping whatever we spent on the Marshall Plan. So something similar, right? Enabling Ukraine to boot out the Russians, um, getting in exchange a much more favorable trade deal with Ukraine and enabling the United States to uh, potentially make back some of this money uh, that it spent, right? Again, it may even just come in the form of savings to our national defense. If a, the Russian military has to go home licking its wounds for a decade, that's fewer U.S. troops that have to be deployed to Europe. So, again, this sort of the, the math actually may not be that bad. There's a ton of options here. Right. But Johnson, of course, trying to navigate all of these dynamics and keep his own job intact. Um, there's also, of course, uh, a demand for policy. They say policy concessions from Democrats on the border. The rumored border bill that I heard was basically uh, immigration 
restriction. And it actually, I think it would have just been better. Uh, and that's probably why it didn't succeed. So a really, really interesting perspective. But here's the thing, guys. Here's the thing you got to remember with politicians. Talk is the cheapest thing on earth. Anyone can say anything, right? I can tell you that I'm uh, I'm a 350 pound jacked 3% body fat world champion bodybuilder, right? I am the next Chris Bumstead. But the problem is it's easy to say those things and it's hard to be that, right? And if you see in here, I'm not exactly rippling biceps, okay? So is Speaker Johnson just full of blowing smoke? I'm trying not to get demonetized, guys. I'm doing my best here. Well, <laughs> Russia Media Monitor has actually picked up some T Kremlin TV. This is actually what this channel does, is they monitor Kremlin television and report on Russian propaganda, right? They provide translations and curated clips. But let's take a look at this absolute insanity. Now, as you guys probably know, these Russian talking head talk shows extremely, extremely pervasive in the Russian social media space or in the Russian media space. They're all Kremlin backed. And you should see some of the, the uh, geriatric jabronis they have doing this. But as you can see, they uh, intersperse it with some combat footage from uh, the Russian front lines. I might have to I might have to censor it, but that's okay. There's also like a clip of a Russian fighter jet uh, HUD, right? But here's the thing to take away. Johnson he says, today's the most important day because today Johnson is going to visit Trump. Right? Now I point this out because guys, can you name a single member of the Russian Duma? Like, can you name a single one? And have you ever heard on your news any of these guys talked about, right? The last time we had a conversation about Russian power brokers like this was when Prigozhin was driving to overthrow Putin. He said, there's, he's describing the meeting that we just talked about. Okay, interestingly dismissive, he says, they're going to talk about funding Israel, Taiwan, and all the rest, which is a weirdly dismissive way of talking about the major Ukraine aid bill. Congress, the speaker, Mike Johnson, speaker, Mike Johnson. Todd Johnson, who... Okay, you see this woman, right? She says, they say, Mike Johnson, that would be our Johnson. The, I think it's implied our boy. I, I, th I know you're like, oh, there's a pun here. It's not. I, I don't think it translates. Interesting. Their British one already went there earlier. This is their local American one. I... I'm trying to tell who the British one is. Let me know in the comments if you know what they're referencing. A British, like, Russian agent? American. Or... Oh, I get it. They're saying this is our Johnson. They're talking about Boris Johnson, right? Boris Johnson famously uh, went to um, Ukraine and urged them not to take a, an exploitive peace deal peace deal, essentially a surrender agreement from Russia, right? Russia, I believe the deal demanded, Russia demanded that Ukraine have basically an army that would be smaller than a U.S. metropolitan police force, right? Rendering the country basically unable to defend itself from a subsequent Russian invasion. So, uh, and Boris Johnson the former prime minister of the UK went to the Ukrainians and said, listen, don't take this deal. The West can back you up. They will give you the tools you need to fight. So don't give in. Um, and again, for two years, he was absolutely correct. Uh, the Russians booted from Kiev, booted out of Kherson, booted out of Kharkiv. Um, so they seem to have been wise to take that deal. Um, that's the Johnson they're referring to. And they're saying that Mike Johnson, Speaker of the House, is our Johnson. Вот, они, что Трамп очень большое влияние. И там, собственно, ситуация с э, внешним финансированием. И плюс, кстати, там у них несколько проектов провисло, плюс по налогам, но это не так принципиально. принципиально. И вот, не, вот сейчас это смещение в день будет, а это может дать новый импульс или наоборот, а Трамп как бы... Окей, okay, they're being really oblique. And this is... Uh, this just... This might just be translations, like... 
some weird Russian, like, like the pronouns may be much clearer or the subjects of these it's and, and uh, that's, um, uh, might be more clear in Russian, but essentially, okay. It sounds like they're just describing the mechanics of what's happening, which is Johnson meeting with Trump, trying to make sure that Trump gets on message and trying to make sure that whatever Johnson puts out, Trump isn't going to shoot down and totally burn. Um, now, can Trump be trusted to actually keep his mouth shut? No. He's shown repeatedly that even when he agrees to something, it's not really worth the paper he's printed on. Um, even if you're pro-Trump, you've got to agree that he changes his mind all the time. It's fascinating. What fascinates me, notice the way that what they don't say is Ukraine aid bill, Ukraine support, NATO or U.S. support for Ukraine, right? They refuse to say it. They never, not once in this segment have they, have the word Ukraine appeared. They say Israel, Taiwan, and all the rest. They say external funding, um, really interesting stuff. And it, they're so oblique with it that I wonder if they were given guidance, um, to try to minimize this. And I think it's because, um, for I think Russia doesn't want their public to actually gain an understanding of the reality that the U.S. will be spending, uh, I believe, 60 billion, I think would be like 15 percent of Russia's entire GDP um, to aid Ukraine. Right. Like Russia, I think we looked it up. It's like five trillion dollars. So that's uh, five, I think, five thousand billion so that's okay. So it's like two or three percent of Russia's GDP um, just to support Ukraine, right? And typically, again, Russia's entire defense budget, its nukes, its its um, uh, uh, submarines, its Black Sea fleet, all of that is like I think like three to four percent of Russia's GDP. This is really interesting. What's fascinating to me is that this is so, the fact that we're seeing Russian and Kremlin talk show hosts go deep, deep, deep into the internal politics of the United States on moving this aid bill is a sign. When people are like, oh man, Russia wouldn't interfere with U.S. electoral processes. Russia doesn't have a, a stake in U.S. election, uh, the, the like legislation process. Guys, these are talking heads, talking head propagandists, and they are putting this information out there. So what do you think is being discussed at what level of detail is being discussed inside the Kremlin basements, right? The 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 FSB offices, right? Russian signals intelligence, Russian human intelligence. What do they know about what Speaker Johnson's intentions are, what Trump's intentions are, what the Democrats? I would bet dollars to donuts that there is almost one to one for every one U.S. congressperson, there is a... FSB analyst who their only job is to try to understand the constraints they operate under and how to influence them. So that sort of thing is just a reminder of that Russia really does want to exert influence and believes it does exert influence. Again, they called Speaker Johnson our guy, which is pretty sus. Anyway, that's all I had. The only other piece of news I wanted to talk about real quick, two seconds, Germany going to hand over one of their Patriot missile batteries to Ukraine, which makes perfect sense because Ukraine is between uh, Germany and Russia. What does that mean? That means literally, of course, obviously, I'm kidding. Ukraine needs it to defend its population centers. And that's the cool thing with a Patriot. Patriots, missile batteries, are not weapons of war in the conventional sense. You cannot place a Patriot, a Patriot missile battery, cannot hurt a civilian. It, it, it's design, it could. I guess in theory, if you like overrode some of the targeting, maybe you go after like a aircraft or something or a civilian aircraft, maybe. But fundamentally, the Patriot missile battery is an anti-ballistic missile system. Its only job is to shoot down ballistic missiles. So it can only it's only defensive. It is a defensive tool. It is a shield. And so the it is it should be the least controversial aid to provide to Ukraine. It should be a no-brainer, especially because. As we've talked about, the Patriot missile batteries for 20 years have had no action, right? 
They, they no, no, nothing in the global war on terror need, required Patriot missile batteries. So now we are getting so much data on how these systems really work on the battlefield. We're learning so much against, against how they fare against the most advanced cruise missile systems in the world. And by most accounts, they're kicking ass. So the U.S. is really, really getting to really see how its weapon systems fare. And the fact is, they're faring well enough that Germany goes, yeah, you can take this one because it'll make a difference. Anyway, that's all I had, guys. Thanks to our Colonel Tier members. Thanks to our Lieutenant Tier members. And thanks to all the members of CombatVetNews.com. I could not do this without you guys. And I will see you all in the next one. Cheers.